So we honestly could have an entire course based on just learning about lasers and the different types of lasers and how they work. Uh, and if you're interested, I'm sure you can uh, find a class like that if you go into graduate school. Um, but we'll just give a brief overview. Uh, lasers generally fall into three different types. We have solid state lasers. And uh, this type of laser includes things like uh, semiconductor lasers. Uh, these are these are often in the near infrared where they uh, generate light uh, the titanium sapphire laser which is also near infrared uh, and this also one of the uh, important ones um, and one that i've used before is the neodymium yag laser yag stands for yttrium aluminum garnet. It's a specific type of crystal in which you embed the neodymium uh, atoms that are used. Uh, and this can range from uh, near IR to visible. And my favorite type of solid state laser is the quantum cascade laser, or QCL. And these, uh, this is the type of laser I use for my research. And so this is a specific type of semiconductor laser that works in a uh, little bit further out into the mid-infrared. Uh, titanium sapphires, near IR, and also tunable. Uh, liquid, we also have liquid-based lasers. Uh, and there's essentially only one, though it's a very important one, is the, is the dye laser. Um, and what's useful with the dye laser is this can range all the way from visible to UV with different laser dyes that you can use. And so I used a a, a liquid-based dye laser uh, in my postdoc. And then we also have gas phase lasers. So, you know, basically we have our, we kind of classify them by the, the uh, state of the lasing medium. And so uh, one of the most common ones, gas phase is the, the helium neon laser or HENI. Uh, this emits specifically red light. Uh, there's an argon ion laser, uh, nitrogen laser, uh, CO2 lasers, and another one, excimer, an excited dimer laser. So CO2 works in the infrared, N2 is UV, argon is visible, um, and excimer lasers work in the UV. Uh, so just to, I have a couple pictures I want to show um, in this PowerPoint here. Uh, so there we go. Um, so we have here, this is the energy level diagram for a helium neon laser. So it's a combination of these two. So you actually excite the helium, but the helium transfers its energy to the neon and that generates our population inversion. And so there's actually multiple different uh, lasing transitions that can be used. The most common one is this one here at 632.8 nanometers. Uh, and so this, you generate an electrical discharge inside of the mixture of helium and neon gas, and that generates the, the lasing medium. And then you have your mirrors and output coupler. Um, so excimer lasers are interesting. They also use uh, electrical pumping, uh, and they use these giant banks of capacitors. Uh, so I worked with these. Uh, they're a little bit scary because <laughs> they can store a lot of electricity. And you need a lot of electricity all at once uh, to generate the, the laser uh, for an excimer laser. And so these are about hockey puck sized, each of these, um, and uh, they can explode. <laughs> Uh, so I I spent a lot of time during my two years uh, in Atlanta uh, changing these out as the laser you know thing the, these would break apart and the laser would stop working and you'd have to very carefully you know drain the power out of them before you started working on them so you could get a pretty nasty shock. Um, this is what the inside of an excimer laser looks like. Uh, I don't remember which model this one is in particular, but the actual lasing medium is this part down here this big silver tube on the bottom. That's where the actual gases go to generate the excimer laser. Uh, and you can see some of the capacitors here. Uh, most of the rest of this is just electronics to generate that electric discharge uh, at the right repetition rate and frequency. Um, you also have to make sure you don't have any leaks in this because excimer lasers tend to use uh, pretty uh, toxic gases, things like uh, fluorine and chlorine, uh, along with uh, noble gases like xenon. Um, so yeah, excimer lasers is pretty interesting. Uh, this is a, a different, this is a, um, 
tie sapph laser. So the red light is the tie sapph laser. And then a diode laser or a semiconductor laser is, is being used to pump it. So this is an example of optical pumping. Uh, and so you need a laser to generate another laser. Uh, so uh, this is just an interesting picture to look at. Uh, so you know some of the examples of, of different types of lasers that we have.